Fred Van Vliet's tenure in the six came to an end with Drake bidding him adieu to the Guangdong Tigers. Get ready to learn Chinese, buddy. It won't be long before you're playing point guard for the Guangdong Tigers. You trash <laughs> out of my face with that bullshit. FVV may have gone from the hero to the villain throughout his time in the six, but as a Raptors fan, thanks to Fred for both his championship sacrifice between the lines and the classy remarks on his way out. The Rockets thanked Fred Van Vliet with a cap hit of a cool 40 million as the kid from Rockford bet on himself and locked down the bag. Speaking of such, the same goes for Dylan Brooks, who got 80 million over four years for trash-talking LeBron and playing a marketable WWE-esque heel. In all seriousness, Brooks provides perimeter defense, intimidating toughness, and six years of NBA experience to a Rockets team looking to take flight in a stacked Western Conference. It doesn't hurt that Dylan knows the ins and outs of a conference rival system, being his old team in Memphis. While many are going to clown Brooks for getting such a massive deal, first of all, he puts fans in the seats, and that's all that matters. And second of all, one bad stretch of basketball doesn't define the man. Over the course of his young career in Memphis, he proved he could stay on the floor with his bulky frame to keep opposing wings off the block. The draft picks of Eamon Thompson and Cam Whitmore were covered in a separate video, go watch that after this. But in addition to the upcoming rookies, plus Van Vliet and Brooks, Houston signed undrafted Aussie stretch big Jock Landale to a four-year $32 million contract and also swiped reigning champ Jeff Green off the market for six mil. Jock will most vitally provide tough internal competition for the likes of Jabari and Alperin. Departing the Rockets either via trade, free agency, or retirement are KJ Martin, Kaminsky, Boban, Kali Stein, DJ Augustine, Ty Ty Washington, Josh Christopher, and Usman Garuba. With a front court with endless potential in Jabari Smith Jr. and Alperin Shengun to surround those developing pieces with the proper guidance, the Rockets really went all in here. The roster over the last couple seasons compared to back in 2021, when a much older core made up of Wall, Oladipo, Gordon, Tucker, and Wood graced the starting five, has made a night and day improvement. What the Rockets are getting with Fred Van Vliet is most prominently a guy that rookie point guard Eamon Thompson can look to guidance for. Houston's also getting one of the scrappiest defensive options in the backcourt across the NBA, as Fred finished third in the association in steals per game. Considering new coach Ime Udoka was able to turn the Celtics into the best defensive team in the league during his lone year in Boston, that plus Van Vliet's IQ, hands, low center of gravity, and got that dog in him-esque effort should have a similar effect for Houston. In terms of the offensive end, there's going to be times where Fred can frustrate you with instances where he can over dribble, but to be fair, he's a really solid ball handler, probably one of the best in the league at handling the rock for that matter. He averaged 7.2 assists per game in 2022-23, a career high and good enough for 15th best among all players. He did have an off year shooting the basketball for Toronto, making not even 40% of his shots from the field, but his player impact per 100 possessions chart displays he earned high marks in about every advanced statistic in terms of playmaking and perimeter defense. Passing-wise, Alperin Shengun and Kevin Porter Jr. carried in the assist department in 22-23, so Van Vliet will certainly relieve some of the burden in that aspect. Regarding Shengun, and based off this recent picture of the kid from Turkey enjoying his offseason, in addition to some rocket science, Rockets fans have gotten in the lab to find out that Alpi's grown into a 7-footer over the offseason. By deducing that the diameter of an NBA ball is 9.51 inches, 9.51 times 9 equals 85 inches divided by 12 equals about 7 feet. It's science. Yes, science! Jabari Smith Jr.'s combination of instinctiveness, IQ, reach, and timing give him elite hand-eye coordination. The reigning all-rookie second-teamer was in the very least the 81st percentile in blocks per 75 possessions, adjusted rim points saved per 75 possessions, contests per 75 possessions, rim defensive field goal percentage versus expected, and percentage of rim shots contested. 
he's got the potential to be one of the game's best interior stoppers. You get a sense for JSJ's versatility and two-way prowess when remembering moments like this one against New Orleans when he called game. Jabari for three and the win! Yeah! He got it in the when you combine Jabari with Brooks and Terry Eason, you've got a front court with some serious defensive range and length that could develop into a nightmarish trio on this end. From there, Houston can feel the most upbeat about the almost certified incoming development of soon-to-be third-year pro Jalen Green. Specifically, expect Jalen to take a big stride in terms of his inside scoring, because in 2021-22, his rookie year, Green made merely 20% of his floaters. However, as a sophomore in 22-23, that rose by a massive 28.5% raising his accuracy on floaters to 48.5% in year two. Imagine if that takes even half of the annual leap that it just did in 23-24, with how polished this kid's off-the-dribble creation and shooting mechanics are. If he can become a near 60% shooter on runners, at that point, I'm not sure how you defend him. The concern for this Houston team is the amount of guards that they have, and additionally, how Fred Van Vliet is going to mesh with Green, both Freddie and Jalen need the ball in their hands to thrive, but Van Vliet, to be fair, is more reliable off the ball than any guard amidst this rocket rotation. So it'll come down to Van Vliet's willingness to let Green take on a majority of the ball handling responsibility. An over-talked about concern, though, that I think isn't an issue and opposed to that, is how the Rockets went all in, because regardless of if the contracts of Van Vliet and Brooks pan out, this team still has a ton of young talent that is craving direction. Also, once the contracts of Brooks and Van Vliet expire, that's going to be around the time when you have to commit money to your flurry of rookie, sophomore, and third-year players, so Dylan and Fred coming off the books will occur at an ideal time. You love to see the Rockets' front office, led by GM Raphael Stone and President Gretchen Scheer, commit to putting both fans in the seats and getting their developing talent surrounded with the proper piece, being veteran guidance. Houston's average age has morphed overnight, from 21 pre-free agency to now 24 post-free agency. The new look Rockets are headed in the right direction, Always a welcome sight for a team in the aftermath of a treacherous rebuild. Making the playoffs will be the target every Rocket fan keeps in their mind's eye, and it's not the most unrealistic goal. This was D-Flow, 